Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, everyone lived happily ever after. Sadly, real life is never quite all that simple. The third season of Once Upon a Time ran from September 2013 to May 2014. Now, the ending of season two had seen Henry Mills, played by Jared S. Gilmore, uh, kidnapped by two people, T Tamara and Greg Mendel, to, because they needed him for something with the Home Office. Turned out the Home Office was actually Peter Pan and that they were transporting him to Neverland for some grand plan that they thought was just to be able to get rid of magic completely. But it turns out there's a bit more to it. The first half of season three saw Emma Swan, played once again by Jennifer Morrison, her parents, Mary Margaret Blanchard and David Nolan, aka Snow White and Prince Charming, played by Jennifer Goodwin and Josh Dallas, along with... Uh, Henry's adoptive mother, Regina Mills, played by Laura Perella, aka the Evil Queen, and Miss Mr. Gold, aka Rumpelstiltskin, played by Robert Carlyle, joining Captain Hook, aka Killian Jones, played by Colin O'Donoghue, to travel to Netherlands to try and rescue Henry. Now, from the evil Peter Pan. Now, Peter Pan, in this case, is played by Robbie Kay, and it turns out that he wants Henry's heart because Henry is the truest believer, and he wants his plan to essentially save Neverland, keep the magic, and ultimately extend his own life. While there, they end up getting some help in the form of Tinkerbell, played by Rose McIver. So that's actually two iZombie actors they managed to get into the show, with Rose McIver and David Anders, who played played uh, Victor Frankenstein in the previous series. And part two saw them... saw kind of a big change, because at the end of part... about halfway through the season, uh, they have it so that uh, there's no way they can stop the second curse. Peter Pan manages to enact a second curse upon Storybrooke, and the only way that Emma and Henry can be safe is if they of leave and return to New York and start a new life for themselves. However, part two of the series sees them brought back to Storybrooke by Killian Jones, Colin O'Donoghue, because the people of Storybrooke are now back from the Enchanted Forest and they've got a new curse to, to deal with. And the second villain they have to deal with after Robbie Kay's Peter Pan is Zelina, played by Rebecca Mader. And I'll say from this... So, this uh, stuff. Season three, I think, is a great follow-up to the first two seasons, and it does continue some continue the storylines, and it does add some parts to it that I actually do think make it a really good series. I mean, additions to the series like Peter Pan is Rumpelstiltskin's father, Peter Pan himself is their interpretation of the Pied Piper. Uh, Regina ends up having a romance with Robin Hood, which is pretty good. Uh, I also like what they did with Rapunzel and the ultimate reveal that Zelina is Regina's sister, but I'll talk about each of these parts that I actually think was really good. With making Peter Pan Rumpelstiltskin's father, the way they actually do it, it does actually work out fairly well. Like, you see Peter Pan in his kind of original father form, played by a different actor, and you see that he, he mainly just wants to trick people and have a good time. But he ends up leaving his son with some people just racing while he goes back to his old tricks, to which Rumpelstiltskin tries to find a way for them to live a new life in a new land. And Peter Pan suggests, why not Neverland? They could make a new life for themselves there. But upon getting there and discovered that because he's grown up, he doesn't have... He can't access the magic because he doesn't have a child's imagination. He ends up sending his son away again and then wishing to be... Okay, a child forever in Neverland, and it's actually quite unfortunate. I mean, you really do feel for Rumpelstiltskin. Just his father, he wants to have a happy relationship with his father, but his father just wants to be a trickster, and it's really heartbreaking to see. 
As I said, I do like uh, Regina's romance with Robin Hood in this particular series. While he had been previously portrayed by actor Tom Ellis, I think Tom Ellis was busy with Lucifer at this time, so he was swapped out for Sean Maguire. And the two of them, I, they're believable as a couple. They're two people who, they've done some bad things, they want a second but with each other, they get a second chance, and you really do start to see Regina develop. And it, it's nice to see, so much so that in the final episode, when it's kind of all undone, it's a little heartbreaking. And you just, you know that she's going to kind of go bad again, but you can understand why. And the other one I kind of want to talk about is Zelina. Zelina is the villain of the second half of the series, and she's revealed to be the Wicked Witch of the West. And once again, she's a tragic character. Like, you can see what she's doing is evil, but at the same time, you kind of sympathise with her. I mean, she's literally been pushed, seemingly pushed aside her entire time. Like, she... Her mother was impregnated by a gardener at the palace who said he was the prince. She ends up falling in love with the actual prince and developing a relationship with her, only to be pushed aside when it's revealed that the baby she's carrying doesn't actually belong to the prince, to which she's then abandoned by her mother and taken to Oz, where she seemingly grows up and tries to change her own destiny, even discovering that her sister... Later down the line, it trains under Rumpelstiltskin, and she wanted to do that. And when she does appear to be getting a good life and becoming a good witch amongst the witches of the Land of Oz, she ends up discovering that when Dorothy comes in, she feels like she's being upstaged, and you really do feel that she's constantly being pushed aside, and she just wants to take control of her own destiny, and you... you you feel for her. I mean, she, what she's doing is wrong, but and she does end up kidnapping a child in an attempt to time travel back and change history, but at the same time, you understand why she's doing it. Now, and once again, all the great side characters are there, all the great background characters, including uh, Gr including Granny, the elves, uh, R Jiminy Cricket, everyone here is great. The only character who I feel kind of got a little bit sidelined was Megan Ori's character of Ruby, aka Little Red Riding Hood. I mean, she is there throughout some of the series, but I just felt like, compared to the previous two seasons, she wasn't there all that much, but at the same time, I can kind of understand because apparently Megan Ori was away at the time filming a new TV show Intelligence. So... Uh, she, she does show up here and there, but I just kind of felt she wasn't as prevalent as in some of the other seasons. But at the same time, I feel this was a great, a great moving on point from the series, and I feel they really did do it good. My favourite character this time around, I think, would probably be Colin O'Donoghue's Captain Hook, or Killian Jones. Then because while I felt in season two he was kind of a bit of a jerk and just going to be a ter stereotypical show off and all the rest of it. By season three, you can really see his kind of character progression. Just you can see the love that he has for Emma Swan, even if it's not always reciprocated. And you legitimately do want to see them together. I can certainly see why Captain Swan became a fan, became a fandom, and why so many people love them together. Now, the season three finale, I'll admit, had me worried at first because it basically shows you know, things happening, and then. Uh, something happens with magic and it's revealed a new character for season four, Elsa. Now, when I when I originally heard that Anna and Elsa were entering the show, I was sceptical. But upon looking at what they actually did with Elsa and with the Snow Queen story in general, I'm pro I've heard a few of my worries quelled, and I, I do think it actually sounds fairly interesting. I mean, I was just worried there was just going to be here they are, but at the same time, what they did with them sounds interesting. So maybe I'll check out season four, maybe I won't. I hope to at some point. But anyway, once more time, season three I thought was a great continuation. The only other little, the only two other points I want to mention is that this was the, the series where Jared S. Gilmore's voice broke. Like, you can hear him at the start of the series, and he sounds just like he did in the previous ones. He sounds like a kid, and then going into the second half, you can definitely hear his voice is broken. So, yeah. 
And also, I do like how they managed to incorporate uh, the pregnancy into the story. Basically, Jennifer Goodwin, apparently at the time, was actually pregnant during Once More Time Season 3's filming. So rather than tr try and figure out a way to hide it, they actually wrote into the storyline. And I actually feel it's believable. You know what? I think they did good here. So there you go. That's my quick thoughts on Once Upon a Time Season 3. I actually felt it was a really good uh, continuation of the story. Anyway, till next time, see ya.